Here we are at our fourth session, final session, on Titus 2, 11 to 14. And my aim here is to try to put all the pieces together so that we can see how Paul is arguing, how his, his thought is progressing or flowing to make his point here. Let's read it. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions, and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession— who are zealous for good works. Father, I know that there is more here than we have seen in these sessions or will see in this one. I pray that you would use these thoughts to spark rich, deep, true observations and implications for everyone who's with me right now. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's circle the main actions. The grace of God appeared. This is really not a verb in the original. It's just an adjective. The grace of God appeared as salvation for all people. So I'm not going to circle that verb. Training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior. I'm not going to circle that one because it's the content of our hope which we're waiting for. Who gave himself for us to redeem us from all uh, lawlessness and to purify for himself a people who are zealous for good deeds. So those are the main activities that I'm trying to figure out. How do they relate to each other? And as I pondered that, I noticed several things. Let me make some suggestions. Now, I don't claim infallibility for any of this. I am, I am struggling with you, and I want to draw you in to help you make your own observations. So you look and see if you see things more or differently than I do. But here's what I see. This historical appearance of the grace of God is like or specified by he gave himself. So this is a statement about the historical crucifixion of Jesus. And we've been treating this grace, which appeared in eternity, which I mean, which existed in eternity, has now shown up in Jesus Christ in his saving work, the heart of which is he gave himself. So I'm connecting this and this. And then I noticed that this training, which resulted from this appearing, had a negative effect. Oh, look, I, I, I left one out. You should have caught me. To renounce. I should have circled that, to, along with to live. Okay, back to where I was. <laughs> I noticed that this training gave rise to a negative effect. Renounce ungodliness and worldly passions. So that's a negative, right? And then I noticed here that this giving of himself produced a negative reaction to redeem him, to redeem us from all lawlessness. I mean, we're being told to stop committing lawlessness here. We're told to stop committing ungodliness and worldliness. That's been, uh, that's part of our, our training. So this is, this is the negative here. And there's a positive counterpart to it here, to live positively for something, not just renouncing something and against something, but for something, self-control, upright, uh, godly. And here, same thing, to purify. So we'll put a positive by this. And here, to purify for himself a people of his own possession who are zealous for good works. That's a positive. So now we've got um, the negative connected like that. And we've got the positive connected like that. 
Now, everything's connected except training and waiting. Hmm. And my biggest issue in trying to figure out the flow here was the function of waiting. Because if he had just said the grace of God appeared, the effect of that appearing and that giving of himself is a training. And the double effect of that training is a negative to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to be done with all lawlessness and a positive to live self-controlled, upright, godly lives who are zealous for good works. End of argument. Got it. Terrific. <laughs> but instead, he's got, he's got this here. Waiting. How does the waiting or the eager expectation, the happy, happy hope relate to these other things? And I'm suggesting, I'm going to suggest that the waiting here is how the training actually works. Let's step back and let me draw it for you and see if you can see what I'm seeing or maybe much more or correct me. So grace appears. That's the showing up in history of Jesus Christ acting God's invisible grace for all to see and experience. The effect of it is training. And what is the result of that training or the aim of that training? The negative and the positive. Negative to renounce ungodliness, positively to live, to live for what? Self-control, upright, godliness, to live for Waiting in joyful hope. And you can see I'm answering my own question by putting the training and the waiting on the same up and down axis here, just like these are. Waiting. And he gave himself. And I'm putting that on the same level as that. And the effect of this giving of himself, we don't have anything corresponding to training here, has a negative effect, namely, redeems from and positive purifies for something. Redeems from lawlessness. Purifies for good deeds. So I'm suggesting, and I realized I didn't line these up the way I was supposed to, I should have put these and these on the same axis. So you make that correction for me. So I'm saying that these right here, use another color to make it clearer, that negative and positive parallels that negative and positive. Gave himself, parallels, grace appeared. Which leaves me wondering, how does this joyful waiting relate to the argument as a whole? And I'm suggesting that it parallels the training and explains how. So I would put it like this. The, uh, the heart or maybe you could say essence of how grace or Christ's self-giving how that grace trains us in all the 
negative renunciations and redemptions from and all the positive living for and purifying for, how it does that, the heart of how it does it is by producing in us a joyful, confident hope of glory. And this, this joy in hope of glory has the power to create renunciations of things that once gave us joy, like these worldly passions here, and produce the kind of self-control. Get rid of lawlessness that used to bring us so much sense of freedom and purify for us a zeal for good works. I would say all of this amazing moral effect flows from this joyful hope. And that's the way the grace of God and the self-giving of Jesus trains us. God bless you as you put all of this into practice by God's Spirit. I'll be praying for you.